just uh, typing away and oh, there's um, there's a name that always comes up um, when I'm typing these boxing books and that's Mickey Duff. Uh, Mickey Duff um, was a was an East End Polish Jew character. It wasn't even his real name. Um, it was a Polish name. I forgot off the top of my head, but he um, sadly died 2014. He would have been a character I would have absolutely loved to have met. Um, certainly written about. But as I'm just typing typing boxing books here. And um, there's always many, many um, reflections from people's memories and his name always seems to come up. Uh, John Spensley, who I've spoken to at length over the years, old Middlesbrough boxing promoter, said, said he was one of them characters that when you shook hands with him, you had to like check if your rings were still on your fingers. Um but he meant that in the nicest possible way. He said he was just an unbelievable character that, you know, would haggle down to the last penny. Um, one one particular um, situation John Spencer had with him. John um, used to promote a middle middleway fighter in Middlesbrough called Dale Henderson Tharn. And uh, Mickey was promoting a show somewhere in Britain. Um, and in his middleweight fighter dropped out so he needed a middleweight uh, the last last second so he phoned John Spenceley and he offered him an absolute pittance and John himself was an old fox at this game um, in his 80s now so he's kind of that same era if you like and uh, he basically charged him something like three times the price for the going rate because it was something like 24 hours notice and uh, otherwise, the show would have been complete gone. So they agreed to it. And uh, about a month later, John Spensley phoned um, Mickey Duff and his wife answered. And she said, John, I don't know what you've done to Mickey, but he hasn't been able to sleep for the last month. Um, just purely because someone got one over him in business. Um, spoken to... Uh, I remember talking to... Uh, one of his old fighters years ago, John John L. Gardner, and he said, we went over together to Atlantic City. Must have been the late 70s, early 80s. And John L. Gardner was mandatory for Muhammad Ali's title. And uh, basically, he wanted um, John L. Gardner to step aside. So they went over and they got so many amount of dollars I can't remember where it was off the top of my head. But I know John L. Gardner said to me it was £16,000 in British money. Now, that was a lot of money. It's still a lot of money today, but obviously, 40-odd uh, years ago, it was it was a hell of a lot. So on the night when they were in the hotel, um, John L. Gardner paid for a night. And Mickey Duff's walking about with this bag with £16,000 in. And John said to me, he said he was that tight, he, he, he slept on the hotel floor. Um, what a character, what an unbelievable character he would have been. Um, was a boxer himself before he went into the matchmaking and the managerial side of things, the training side of things, the promoting side of things. Um, you know, he was a guy who, I think it's well documented, that when the Cray twins were sentenced to life imprisonment, uh, in May 1969, Ronnie Cray sent him a dead rat and he just laughed because he would always stand up to them. Uh, and also, I mean, Mickey, Mickey Duff had many runs of Paul Sykes um, in the 70s and in the, particularly the 80s. Um, you know, I spoke to a few people um, when Sykes would always go for Mickey Duff and have a go at him. And Mickey Duff would just stand his ground and just shout back at him. Uh, Mickey Duff was half Paul Sykes' size, um, but he, he was a guy who took no shit. But what an unbelievable character he was. Uh, I think he belongs to that part of the British boxing. That's kind of not there anymore. <sighs> when I say that, I'm talking about your, your Tommy Millers, um, your Jarvis Astaire's, your Harry Levine's, your Terry Lawless's. 
Um, all really, really interesting characters. Uh, I mean, Tommy, Tommy Miller, he himself was an old fighter. Uh, many of you will have seen him from the Paul Sykes documentary, Paul Sykes at Large. And uh, he was a pro himself, but his name wasn't actually even Tommy Miller. Um, he'd have been about <clears throat> he'd have been about hundred over a hundred now. I think he died mid eighties, two thousand and five. Uh, and he was a a cat. Um, when he was in the promoting business, he would cut a lot of corners. I know um, John Spencer said to me when they were for one fight short, he even put his own son in. And uh, when he was knocked out, he said to John, "Fucking hell." My wife's going to kill me. Um, but he was, you know, I spoke to people like your, your Alex Morrisons and the, your people like your Mickey Duffs, your, your Tommy Millers, the characters that are gone now out of British boxing. Um, and I certainly think the game's a bit less, more interesting. Um, even some of the characters like your, your Barry Hearns, um, Frank Maloney's gone now, uh, now it's Kelly. Uh, Frank Malo Frank Warren actually came in um, towards the late seventies because he was actually Lenny McLean's second cousin. So he started with the Roy Shaw, your Lenny McLean fights, um, your Alex Steen. So it was all like a a really, really proper. You know, I would have loved to have. Um, sadly, it was it was before my generation, or you know, before I was born, but. Um, what a what a must have must have been a really interesting era, um, to be around British boxing, but uh, that was Mickey Duff, and there's a marvelous documentary on YouTube. Um, oh, I can't remember what it's called now. But if you Google it, just type in his name, and it's just literally about he's just there with a phone on his ear and a phone on that ear and a fag in his mouth, and he he's just people are phoning him, and he's just telling everyone to fuck off who's asking for money. Um, yeah, you know, many, uh, I've spoke to a few people over the years, people like Alan Temple and Peter Richardson, and uh, even though they were the biggest prospects in British boxing in the early 90s, Mickey Duff's attitude was, I'll sign you, but I'm not giving you a sign and on fee, I'm the best, and um, he'd just point to his pictures of Charlie Magri and John L. Gardner, Morris Hope, John Conte, and, you know, and, um, you know, where Frank Maloney was at the time chucking money at, at people. So he was certainly a one-off character. And uh, he's been immortalised in Cockney Ram slang. Um, of course, Mickey Duff these days means puff. Uh, cannabis, wacky bucky. Um Yeah, what a, what, a, what a great character I would have loved to have met. Um but yeah, he's, he's uh, died 2000 and, uh, 2014. Um, yeah, and the, the game I think is not quite to what it what it used to be since uh, the, the likes of him have gone. Uh, lots of lots of funny stories. I always come up on Mickey Duff. Uh, I would have loved to have done his book. Um, I think there is one already. But as I said, he's he's just a an unbelievable character. Um, but yeah, he was once upon a time the Mr. Big and Boxing. So uh, don't forget to leave your comments below, guys. This uh, channel's all about opinions. Um, be nice, you know. Um, Wales not a nice place at the minute, so I haven't got time to uh, to argue for anyone. Not even going to engage or just be blocked because uh, I'm really busy. So thanks for your time, guys. Don't forget to click and subscribe. God bless.